is a, a you know maybe subset of Q because we have only Q at the moment and it's non empty. Okay. Then what is going to be the meaning of okay? We can't assume that. We, we can define it in general actually. We can say that let S be an ordered set. So it's like it's any set with some order. So it could be numbers, it could be anything. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let S be an order set. So what do you think? And and let gamma uh, be be something, okay? Which, which has that property and what that property it has. So we say that gamma is upper bound for S. Give me the definition. What do you think? What should be the definition for upper bound? All elements of S are less than that. So in other words, we're going to say that. Someone calling me. Said then why is it uh, greater than all x's? See, we we have written it. Gamma is bigger than all x's that are in s. So gamma needs not to be in s. Yes, gamma is not necessarily. We are not assuming that gamma. You know, I'm not saying that gamma can't be. In it can be. Right? It can be outside s as well. Okay. But obviously, it's going to be of the same nature. You know, you can't have a. You know, you can't have apples here and oranges here. You can't compare apples. Gamma is not unique, obviously. I'm not saying that it's unique. It's a good point to reflect upon. Okay? So it's upper bound. Okay? If, you know, every element sitting in S is smaller than gamma. Make sense? So what do you think that what should be the definition of lower bound? So you can define the analogs. So you say that. So it's like reverse then equality. So it's just reverse then equality. Okay. <clears throat> Give me an upper bound for this set in Q. Or maybe in Z actually. Okay. So what, what are going to be the upper bounds for this? Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, in three, Z. Four. In Z. Okay. And how about in Q? Uh, three by two. Three by two. Five by two. And so on and so forth. Okay. I always say that whenever you consider something to be true, you also consider and make a mind that when that thing is not going to be true. So in other words, if I am saying that something is upper bound, then this should hold for all x. And how about if something is not upper bound? Then what are you going to do? Then for some what should be what should be what should be, if I want to say that gamma is not upper bound for us, then so we can find it to one s. Ah, we are going to say that okay, there is an s, okay, which violates this condition. This this relation. Okay, violates this relation. And hence, we are going to say that okay, gamma is not upper bound. Is greater greater than r. Okay, greater than r equal. What is the next thing that I would like to do? 
So let's let's talk about. So in other words, a set can have lots of upper bounds. Okay. Then sometimes we are interested in that among the upper bounds for a set, which one is the least or which one is the smallest. Okay. So we call it least upper bound. Or uh, you know there is another name for it and we call it supremum. Yes. Supremum. Okay. And a symbol that we use is soup. It's like supremum of a soup of okay. So what should be the definition? What do you think that what should be the definition of L U B? Let's say least upper bound. Let's say strictly greater and nearest. Strictly greater and nearest. Okay. Strictly greater and nearest. Nearest to what? Last number of states. What if there is no last number? For example, can you find a last number here? We are going to discuss that actually. We are going to discuss that, that there is no last number here. I mean if there is one number which satisfies this condition, you can find another number within set which satisfies this condition but it's bigger than your previous number. So you can always have a new number within set. Okay. So what if there is no last number? If we define set of uh, those bounds, mm -hmm. upper bounds, and mm -hmm. find the least number in there. Greatest and upper bound. Greatest number of upper bound. Greatest number of upper bound. No sir, so least number. Least number. Least so, number. so another recipe is this, that okay, um, that if you have uh, what do you call? Set of upper bounds. All upper bounds, upper bounds. And then try, and try to find the least among them. Mm -hmm. so that, that will be like least inviting bound. another problem basically. So you have to find a, you know, a, 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 you know, a kind of a lower bound on something. Okay, you know, it's, 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 it's a fine strategy. But how about if he say, so you know, okay. So, so it's like someone is saying to you that bring me Okay, bring me bounds. all the upper bounds. Bring me the codfish. Okay. So bring me the codfish. Okay. So requirement is basically, say for example, codfish. Codfish is a kind of a fish. Okay. So the first thing, the first thing is that that thing that you are bringing, it should be fish. Okay. Then then it should have basically you know the, that codness property or whatever that property. So in other words, if we are saying that something is least upper bound, so it should be an upper bound actually. <laughs> so the first thing is that it must satisfy, you know, this property. Okay, it must satisfy this property. The second thing that you can basically, you know, you know, you, you, you can define it. You can define it very naturally. So in other words, I am saying that okay, I have lots of upper bounds, and I have the least one. How you can know that it's least one? You can say that okay, this this gamma is the least upper bound. If I have another upper bound, then this gamma should be less than this the other, other, other upper bound. So that would be a natural way to basically define it. So if I say that gamma is the least upper bound, then it should satisfy the property one. And what should be the second property? That if if beta is an upper bound for S, then this gamma must be smaller than beta. Equal to beta. Okay? You can have also equality, it doesn't matter. So it's fine. You can have equality. So can we say for all beta upper bounds? For all? Beta. No, no. Just I mean, it's fine. I mean, if there is an arbitrary beta, okay. which is an upper bound of set, okay. then this gamma must be smaller than that arbitrary beta. Is it making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So it's like it's like you have, you know, bado mein sabse chota. Okay. How are you gonna How are you gonna prove that something is you know, you know smallest among you know, the big ones actually? Okay, the elder ones. So you're gonna say that okay, if there is an elder, okay, it must be bigger than the smallest. So you're saying the same thing actually. 
Because the least of a bound is that if, if you have another bound, okay, then gamma must be less than or equal to beta. Sir, okay. sir. That's one way to define it. Sir, uh -huh. is least upper bound unique? Is least upper bound unique? It's a good question. But it's a good, it's, it, it could be a proposition to prove. The answer is yes. yes. Least, least of a bound must be unique. Then your definition doesn't feel that it's unique. What? Gamma is less than beta. In this equation, if yes, I say 3 is beta, then uh -huh. there are a lot of numbers which satisfy this equation. So beta is not unique. X, uh, gamma, gamma is unique. Gamma is telling gamma is unique. Uh -huh. And for this equation, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. if I say beta is 3, uh -huh. then there are lots of numbers which are less than 3. So which satisfies that actually? Hmm. Okay. Fine. 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 But we're going to say that it, there is a creature, okay, which is supremum of this set, and we'll name that creature as a scale root of 2. Hmm. We're going to prove that this set must have a supremum, we're going to get into that, okay, don't confuse yourself, don't worry, okay, we're going to say that there must be a supremum for that, and that supremum is basically a creature, you know, just for naam hum de dete so we are giving it name scale root of, scale root of 2 actually, okay, and that is going to be unique, you can't find something which is smaller than that creature scale root of 2, and, and it's upper bound for, okay. So does every set, uh, have uh, this bounds and if he is in it's not necessary, it's not necessary. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about it. For example, you have this example right in front of you that in Q you don't have an upper bound for this set. Oh, you have an upper bound but you but don't have a least upper bound. Yeah. There's no least upper bound. Because the square root of 2 is a gap, it can't be in Q. It's an R but it can't be in Q actually. And red also. In Z also, obviously. Something is not in Q. I mean, if, if this thing is not making sense to you, let me let me let me rewrite this in another other way. Let me rewrite this in another way. Okay. So if if beta is smaller than gamma and gamma is your candidate, let me write it in another way. So if beta is smaller than gamma and the gamma is your candidate for being supremum, then beta can't be an upper bound. Isn't that the same thing to say that if beta is smaller than gamma, then beta is not upper bound for for what? S. S. That is taking control positive. That is we can find x one such that is there is x in s such that the beta is less than that x. Okay. It's a bit abstract, but it's not that much difficult to solve. Because, because just think about it, we just said that can you, when something is not going to be upper bound for a set. So it's not going to be upper bound for a set if there is an element in set which is less than, which is, less than uh, which is kind of you know superseding that candidate upper bound. Okay? So what we are saying is that you can have two ways to define a least upper bound. So it's like a least upper bound is an upper bound. Okay? And it's a kind of an upper bound that if beta is another upper bound, then this gamma must be smaller than beta. Okay? Uh, the other way to define it is that if you take anything else which is smaller than gamma, then that beta can't be an upper bound. Because gamma is the smallest upper bound. So I mean if, if you can find something smallest than gamma, then gamma is no more least upper bound than that number is going to be the least upper bound. So if the gamma is really an up, least upper bound, and you have something smaller than gamma, then that you know that that thing can't be an upper bound basically. Okay? So that's what that's what basically.
you know, another way to look at the thing is. Okay. So let's do some examples. Okay, let's do some examples. So as we have defined the supremum, so you can have something which is called infimum. So it's going to be the greatest lower bound. So we have loads of lower bound, but which one is the bigger of all? Okay. And you know, think about defining it yourself. Okay, I'm just defining least upper bound. Think about defining the infimum. Okay, or the greatest lower bound. Infimum. Infimum. Okay, and you denote it by inf, INF. Okay, or you also call it GLB, greatest lower bound. Okay. Okay. What you said. <laughs> okay, so imagine this. I have this set actually. How about if I have a set, say, okay, one to say for example ten. Okay. <coughs> so what are the upper bounds for this set? So, so you have a 10 in Q for example, so you have 10 and is this the 10? Upper bounds? Upper bounds. So you have loads of upper yes. bounds. So it's like a 10 and a, you know, 10, up, uh, uh, okay, 10 plus some rational number and you know, you can keep on adding. The least of the ticket. 10 plus 1 half, 10 plus 1 third, 10 plus 1 fifth and you know, several things. You can have that upper bound for basically 10. So between all those upper bounds, which one is smallest? Ten. Ten. How are you gonna prove it? That's what the case is. So, so, so ten is ten is indeed upper bound. Upper bound for ten is indeed upper bound for for a least upper bound. But how are you going to prove least of a bound? Can you compare? Okay, so that, that could be one of the definitions. We can take but, but this can be this this description can be applied to 10 plus 1 upon 2 as well. That for every element here, it's less than. So so the best is to basically do this. So you think that the 10 is the upper bound, you do, you do that, you do what? Take something which is smaller than 10 and show it it can't be an upper bound for you. So what is smaller than 10? 9. nine. So if 9 an upper bound for no, this set, there why? Eight. Because you have a 10 and eight. You know, which is bigger than that. So 9 can't be an upper bound, 8 can't be an upper bound, 7 can't be an upper bound. Okay. So the only possibility that you have is actually ten. Ten. So, so this part of definition is, you know, some, something very interesting actually. It can just quickly tell you that okay, well that. So if you have a candidate which you think that is an upper bound, at least upper bound, you take something smaller than that, okay, candidate, okay, and then then show that something smaller than that number cannot be an upper bound for the given set, okay. So hence the 10 is going to be the least upper bound. So you can choose it arbitrary, but if, if something is concrete is given to you, then you can you can you can talk about the concrete thing. Okay. So you have to kind of argue with that. <laughs> How about if I take this now? Interval 0 to 1. Hmm? Interval 0 to 1. So is this... So what, what, is, what do you think that what is a candidate for? What is a candidate for? Ah, okay. So you can say we haven't defined... Oh, right. Alright. Alright. You can have a fatal error. Well, let's return back to calculus part. <laughs> so, at the moment, I, I, would, I would just like to basically okay, give a sense of this definition. Okay. Okay. 
So what do you think that which is going to be an upper bound? Okay, let's define it. This 0, 1 is set of all rationals between 0 and 1. We are done. Okay? 0 is rational. Including 1. Including 1. Including 1. Okay? So we can define it in that way. So it's a subset of rational number. Okay? Which contains all rationals between 0 and 1. Okay? So, so, so what do you think that what is the candidate for least upper bound? One is the candidate for least upper bound. Number one, is one an upper bound? In other words, is every element in this yes. interval is smaller than one? Yes. The answer is yes. So, how about, sorry, imagine I am putting things here, okay? So that is zero and that is one, okay? So these are all rational numbers between. How you can show that this, this one is least upper bound? How are you going to show that least upper bound property? So the best is that you say that, okay, if we have something smaller than one, it can't be an upper bound. Okay? So, so you can say that let, let, let P is some number which is smaller than one. Okay? So, and it's rational number, obviously. So where is going to be the P? Between any here. So where you want to put it? So it, it can be here, it can be here, it can be here, it can be, it can be anywhere. So if it is here, there are lots of rational numbers between you know p and 1, which are part of this set and bigger than p. Can you see that? And if you put p here, you're gonna have the same trouble. You can even take this basically p as much as near to 1, it doesn't matter. So in other words, if you, you really make it near to 1, you're still going to have, you know, rational numbers between 1 and your p, which is going to be the average, okay, which is part of the interval 0 to 1 and bigger than p. And hence, p cannot be an upper bound, okay. So the only possibility is 1 is the upper bound. Okay? Is it making sense? So applying this definition is going to be is going to be Alright. Right. So so that's a way to think about. Sir, I am a little bit confused in that. Uh-huh. Sure. We have defined two definitions for that uh -huh. least upper bound. Which one we are applying for that? Which one? No, no, both are equivalent. Actually. Yes, but here, which one is you? I am applying this part. So that means show that in order to prove basically, I am applying this. No, no, no. It's not, it's not, we don't need to do this with contradiction. We are going we're gonna to say that if I am picking something. Less than, gamma. less than gamma, which is candidate for least upper bound, mm. then I can find a point in S okay. which is going to supersede X. So I'm saying that let's take a P between, okay, let's <coughs> let's let's put it zero here as well, so that you should make sure that it's not going way beyond this interval. And P is candidate for that also. One is the candidate for you know least upper bound. So we're gonna say that if I have a P something which is smaller than one, then within the interval I can find a number which is p plus one upon two, okay, which is going to be bigger than your required, <coughs> and hence you know the p, hence the one is basically least step upon, and p is not an upper bound basically, okay. So it's not it's not that difficult. We need to just go through the flow and okay. So in, 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 in work, I, you know, you can even find basically. <coughs> all right, so, all right. so, so Unsa raised a very good point that is least upper bound unique? So is it unique actually? You need to, you need to see it actually. Is it unique? How how we should go to you know go to the proof basically? How should we argue? What do you think? Assume there are two. Assume that there are two. 
and so that so you say that let gamma one and gamma two be two different or maybe two supremums for for a okay for set s actually okay so supremum for more explicitly that it's supremum for s making sense yes, and my claim is then gamma 1 and gamma 2 can't be different yes, so if gamma 1 is supremum for s sir we have trichotomy the r2 huh? we can also compare them by defining either these two are equal or one is less than other or other is less than uh -huh. the first uh -huh. one and then getting the contradiction and close to mm -hmm. okay. that will be one of the, one of the way okay. so you, you can say that okay imagine that gamma 1 is smaller than gamma 2 then, then okay. gamma 1 gamma 2 cannot be the gamma 1 is smaller than gamma 2 why this is a trouble making thing we haven't defined in general so we are saying that we have two supreme but one supreme is smaller than other but what is the second property that we have? So we have that if something is supremum and you take something smaller than that supremum, then you know that smaller thing is not even going to be an upper bound, you know, forget about supremum. <laughs> so if, if gamma 1 is smaller than gamma 2 and gamma 2 is really a supremum, then gamma gamma there is no way that gamma 1 can be an upper bound. So can, so can, can, is it possible that gamma 1 is supremum but not an upper bound? No. You know, that's not possible actually. So this doesn't make sense. Okay. So, so, so gamma cannot be smaller than gamma 1. So gamma 2 cannot Similar. be for the same reason. You know, it can't be smaller. So the only option that we have is gamma that is equal to gamma both two. must be equal actually. So it's a good point. Okay. So you know, do all these things for infimum as well. I'm leaving that for you to do that. Okay. Leaving that for you. All right. So what actually we are going to do now? Is it break actually? Yes, sir. Can we break? Yes, sir. Can we, sir? Is it? Can we, sir? Stop it and then we begin with our 